The Indy 500 is one of the fastest racing events of the year. With speed comes danger, however, and this is something that has arisen multiple times in the 111 years since the first Indy 500. There have been videos that discuss the tragic and frankly dark nature of the 1992 and 1973 Indy 500s, but there is one on par with this as seldom remembered, mainly because it happened 102 years ago. May 31st, 1919, the day of the seventh running of the Indy 500. It would be the first Indy 500 to be run since 1916, as the previous two years saw the US deep in the trenches of the First World War. The rookie class for this year's 500 was significant, seeing 19 rookies line up on the 33 car grid. A lot of these drivers deserve their own dues, but for now, we'll stick with the tale of two men competing in the 500 for the first and tragically last time. Starting 18th in the number 18 Duesenberg is a 39 year old from Texas named Arthur Thurman. He was born in Tarrant County on September 27th, 1879, but he spent most of his life in Georgia. Arthur was the oldest of seven children from Charles and Elizabeth Thurman. Arthur had to battle through adversity to get to his Indy 500 debut. His youngest sibling, whose name is unknown, had died in infancy when Arthur was 18. He also lost his sister, Elsie, who died in childbirth in 1910. Possibly the worst loss, however, came from the death of Arthur's first and only child in 1905. Arthur had a tragic life, but he must have felt a sense of pride and joy when he qualified for the 1919 Indy 500 at a speed of 98 miles an hour. Although he wasn't at the front, Arthur and his riding mechanic Nicholas Molinard had high hopes entering the race. Seven places back in 25th was another rookie. Half a mile west of the small Iowa town of Pella was where Louis Bennett Lecoq and his three siblings were born and raised. He faced an equally tragic upbringing as his fellow rookie Thurman, losing his sister at only three years old and his parents, Theodore and Sophia, before he turned 20. Louis Bennett began his career in 1914, serving as a riding mechanic for drivers like Ralph Mulford, Tom Alley, and Eddie O'Donnell. In 1915, he became a part of the Sloan Driver Group, which toured around the United States and Canada, racing on dirt and board tracks. Louis refined his skills over the years and was ready to make his very first Indy 500 with his riding mechanic from Los Angeles named Robert Bandini. The month of May itself was very clean up until race day, the only hiccup being the nine days of practice which were rained out. Besides that, however, practice and time trials were quite mundane. Once Sunday came, however, tragedy and danger would rear its ugly head. At 11 a.m. on the dot, on May 31st, 1919, the seventh running of the Indy 500 would begin. The beginning of the race was dominated by 1915 winner and fourth place starter Ralph De Palma. He was leading the race when on lap 45, a crash would occur in turn three. The estimated crowd of 120,000 people feared the worse, and sadly they didn't have to wait long for their suspicions to be proven correct. On lap 45, Arthur Thurman lost control and hit the inside wall. Eyewitnesses report that the car flipped three times before coming to a rest in turn three. Thurman was thrown 25 feet from the car, and nearly 10 minutes later, on way to hospital, Arthur Thurman passed away, age 39. His riding mechanic, Nicholas Molinard, sustained a skull fracture, but survived. The 7th Indy 500 already had a dark cloud above it, but nearly 50 laps later, another tragedy occurred. Louis Bennett would lose a tire entering turn 2. The car veered into the outside wall, bursting a fuel tank and overturning. Louis Bennett and Robert Bandini were trapped inside their car and burnt to death. Much like racing events of the time, however, the race kept going and was eventually won by Howdy Wilcox. Tragically, however, Wilcox would also pass away just four years later in a crash at the Altoona Speedway in September of 1923. 